Hey guys, it's Casey and I am back for another short tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about how we can use the construction script to use to kind of procedurally generate things for our world. We're going to be talking about kind of simple like how can we if we had like one piece of a of a fence, how could we make it so that we could have a fence that's like 50 parts long without having to physically like place in 50 parts. We do that through the construction script and we're also going to be getting into a little bit of instanced static meshes. So, what I want to do is I'm just in a third person template and I think I'm just going to use this cube and we're going to pretend like this is something fancy, maybe like a fence like I said. I just want to scale it down to one just to get it back to its normal sizes. Uh, I hate lighting like that. Let's just change our light to be movable. There we go. Let's do that to our skylight too. There we go. And now with this, I just want to make this into an actor. So with this cube selected, I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to do blueprint add script and we're just going to call this like our fake fence or something. That works for me. And now, inside of our blueprint, for those of you who have never used the construction script, it's probably some fancy, mysterious world that you never touch because, well, you should never really touch the construction script unless you know what you're doing. So normally you work in the event graph when you're doing code. This is where we can do our events, we can do our begin plays, we can do our on tick, we can do some functions, some custom events. It's all great and dandy. That's for doing code at runtime. When some people are playing our game, this is the code we want to run. Construction script, how I view it, is this is the code that I want to run while I'm working inside of the editor. That There's a very big distinction between the two. And one of the most helpful things that we can use this construction script for is kind of what it's named. It, it can be used to construct things for us to make, make our life easier while we're working inside of the editor. So what I want to do is I want to set up an instance static mesh. So there is a difference between a static mesh and an instance static mesh. Let's see if um, Unreal will help this out for us. Let's see. So if we highlight instance static mesh on our add component, it is named a component that efficiently renders multiple instances of the same static mesh. That's a pretty good description. Because an instant static mesh, or rather if we look at a static mesh, if we put a thousand static meshes next to each other, even if they were the same exact static mesh, I believe you're going to get a thousand draw calls, at least a thousand draw calls for the static meshes. And on top of that, I believe you'll also get the however many draw calls for their materials also. I, it's been a while since I read the documentation on this and really have it fresh in my brain, but I believe with instant static meshes, I believe we can get them to share the same material, and I believe we might even get them to have the same draw call on the actual object rendering too. We might do some, if I can remember the, um, the console commands by the end of this video, we'll see if we can do some performance checks on these and we'll look into, it, into that a bit more. But in a very simple sense, it is more efficient to have a thousand instant static meshes next to each other than it is to have a thousand static meshes next to each other. It just helps our draw calls is really what it helps. So what we want to do is we want to add an instant static mesh here in the top left. And what, what's going to happen with an instant static mesh? So I just want to copy over what we're using here. So I'm going to hit the magnifying glass on our normal static mesh and copy it over to our instant static mesh. Then you'll see that when we add an instant static mesh, you don't see it in the viewport. It's because an instant static mesh hasn't been added yet. It, you have to do it through the code. So we have declared what our instant static mesh is going to be, but it isn't placed anywhere, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do in our construction script is we are going to start placing some instant static meshes. So one thing I want to do is inside of our construction script, I want to make a variable. Now I'm going to make this our integer, and it's going to be called our account. Or let, we'll call it like our object count. Maybe that'll be better. Our object count in that what we want to do is we want to make this an integer and something very important is that we want to make this um, instance editable. So you can make an instance editable by either checking the box up here or down on our variables on the bottom left, they actually made a little shortcut to doing it. This is a closed eye right here and if we click it, it makes it like an open eye. I don't know what the logic behind that is, or at least I think that's an eyeball. So that will make it instance editable. And that's important because now with our cube selected inside of the world, you'll see that we get access to our variable and we get our object count here. So what we want to do is on our construction script, okay, a way to view the construction script. How does this fire? So this is technically an event. 
the construction script fires when we place it when we place this object in the world when we move it inside of the world i believe whenever this object or this actor is interacted with inside of the world i believe it updates the construction script it might be slightly different than that but that's how i kind of view it since this only is going to be firing inside of the editor and not when our game is actually playing we're not too concerned about efficiency with the construction script however if you have too many things that are working off the construction script in your level and you have like everything inside of your level is like procedurally construct construction scripted if you end up firing the construction script a lot while you're working in the editor you can have some slowdowns there but normally we're not too concerned with it so on construction, what I want to do is I want to place our instant static meshes. So what I want to do is I want to take this reference to our instant static mesh, and I believe we do add instance. So we can do add instance, and let's do local space. We don't want to really be working in world space. I want to be relative to where our cube is. So we're going to do add instance in relative space. And if you don't know what relative versus world space is, I really recommend checking out my vector math video. I go over that a bit there. And now we need to make a transform. I don't want to alter my rotation or scale. What I want to do is I want to alter our location. So what are we altering our location by? Well, I want to pretend like this is a fence or this is a pair of columns. So I want to place these neatly next to each other. So I'm going to go into my cube and I want to check how wide is this. So I can see my cube is 100 by 100 by 100. That makes this very convenient for us. So I know I want to place this 100 units to the side of our, of our existing cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place this, let's just do it for now. We're gonna add one instance and we're gonna place it 100X to the side of our existing cube. So now, if we look at our cube, whoa, why did everything, oh, we're compiling shaders for some reason. Not sure why it's compiling, but we'll let that do its thing. Give that another second, there we go. Okay, so there we go. So what we have here is we have our existing cube that is our normal static mesh, and then we added one additional instance static mesh 100 units to its side say we want to make that farther away we could or let's do it at a diagonal we could make this 100 by 100 and when we compile our construction script will refire and you can see here now it is slightly offset 100 units by 100 units so that's how we can add a single instance but let's say we wanted this to be more of a workable tool so that if we wanted to quickly create like a really long wall or a really long fence how can we just quickly do that so we're going to use this variable we created so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back here and i'm going to delete these numbers here and now what i want to do is i want to use this integer that we have and i want to loop through it and create that many additional walls so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a for loop on with this being the last index in our starting index i want to be let's do our starting index at two i believe because the reason why i'm going to start at two is because we have an existing cube that we're starting with so if i have this set to one i want there to just be this one cube however when i set this to two i want to create the additional cube and then offset it you might not need to do this too if you're not using an existing um, static mesh at the core but i'm going to leave that there because i think it helps us visualize where our center is or where our origin is so what i'm going to do is our first index is going to be two and our last index is going to be the amount the object count that we want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hook that up and now on the loop of this, so this is going to loop through however many objects, say we want five cubes, well, we're going to have the one existent in the world already, and now, then we're going to loop through two, then three, then four, and then five for four additional cubes to make five total cubes. And now what we need to do is we need to offset these cubes. So to do that, we're going to take our index, and we're going to take our index, and we are going to multiply it by an offset. So actually, did I mess up here? Because if we start at two, then we're gonna, mm, yeah, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna go backwards on what I said. We're gonna start with index one, and we're just gonna know that, hmm, yeah, that's gonna be an issue. So we're just gonna start at one so that if our object count is one, technically we're gonna have two cubes. And, that, and that's because of our math will, will be a little wonky. So if we start with index one, what we wanna do is we want to multiply our index by an offset. So we want to do integer, times hmm should we do float i think flow will work just fine and now what we want to do is since our offset is 100 that means that when we hit cube number one we're going to offset it by one times 100 which will be 100 and then when we come back through and we hit object number two it's going to be two by 100 and that's going to offset by 200 and so forth and that's going to make this super nice so i'm going to make a vector 
and we're going to offset this by our x and now I'm going to plug that in and now I believe we should be good to go. So now with our count set to 1 we get one additional cube and now if I set this to 5 you can see we get our five additional cubes. So this could be a really easy way if we wanted to have a bunch of fences in our world or a really long wall inside of our world we don't have to come in and place one cube and then maybe alt and drag and get a second and then a third. We can more procedurally do it or do it with some math and that we could just start adding a lot of numbers to it and we can do this in our construction script to help us construct objects inside of our level. And once again, since we're doing this with, with instance static meshes, our draw calls are actually going to be very nice also. Let's see, I believe it might be stat render. Hmm, what is it? Stat dot, or r dot stat, what is it? Render dot, oh man, I can't remember the console commands. I feel really bad about that. Hmm, ha. Huh. Let's see. I thought it was r dot stat. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see if I can Google this, Google this real quick. Let's see. UE4 static mesh draw call console command. Sorry about this. I, I think it's worth looking this up real quick. So profiling draw calls. Let's see. It would be. I thought it was stat dot render. Let's see. If I don't find this in one more second, then we are definitely just going to move on. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, pull up. It would be, do, 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 if we do scene rendering, does that give us our draw calls? That does give us our draw calls. So the console command we're looking for is stat scene rendering. Let's see if I can spell that right. There we go. So here we can, we can visualize on the bottom here, we have our static mesh draw calls. So with this just held still, it looks like we get around 27 draw calls. If we put this up to let's say 13, you see how our draw calls doesn't change. Whether we have one cube or we have 10 cubes, you can see how our draw calls did not change there. You see that? You see how we have like 86 to 87 mesh draw calls and then we have our static line draw calls and stuff like that? It's not changing based on the amount of cubes we're adding in here. Whereas if I were to drag this cube in, look what happens. We go up to 88. And if I were to add another, you see we will go once it, it goes up to 91. And if I add another, does it go to 93? Let's see if it chills out. No, it goes to 94. And then we add another and it's 97. So you can see here when we just add a cube to a cube to a cube in the world normally as a static mesh, we're adding a bunch of draw calls. But if we use this instant static mesh actor and we do it in our construction script, you can see how very nicely we can add or subtract a ton of draw call or a ton of meshes without really affecting the draw calls at all. Once again, we're at 86. We add 10. We're still at 86. So that's pretty cool. So this is how you use the construction script. You can do a bit more. I've used the construct construction script to make a building tool where I could make an entire building where I could specify the, the size of the floor and then it built walls around it, put a roof on it. I could make it add like a second floor or third floor. So you can do some really cool things with the construction script. Um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty powerful. It really helps when you're trying to do things side by side, in my opinion. If we wanted to, not only could we have static mesh draw calls for a cube, let's see, let, let's actually add another st uh, static mesh here. Let's do another instant static mesh, and let's do something wacky. Like, let's add like a sphere. Is it called a sphere? What is it called? It's going to be called a, what is it called? Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. What is the geometry called? It's blanking out of my mind. It is called, a, yeah, it is a sphere. So if we draw, drag our, let's see, can we get our basic, and let's drag our sphere in, let's navigate to it, and now we, I think we should be able to do our sphere. There we go, now we get our sphere. So now, let's do it so that on every even number, so let's say on every even number, we want to add a sphere above one of our cubes. So what we can do is we could divide this index by, let's actually mod this index, and we'll do it by two, in that if we get a, let's see, if mod two is equal to zero, which means we're at an even number, we will do on true. What we will do is we will add a sphere. So we're gonna add another instant static mesh. We'll copy that. We want to add another static mesh. And we want to link that to our second one, which is our sphere. And it's transform, this is getting a tad sloppy, it's transform, we just want to be this, if we do another make vector, we want its transform to be the same X, but let's raise up its Z and let's make it, let's say, uh, mm, let's do like 200 units above it. And now what we should have is we should have on every even, even cube 
above it should now be an instance of a sphere. So it should be cube with a sphere, and then just a cube, and then cube with a sphere, and then just a cube. And what I'm just trying to articulate with this is that if we turn off that, what I'm trying to articulate is that we don't have to just be placing one object at a time with this. We can actually use this to maybe make an entire road. Say you had a chunk of road, and you wanted to place that chunk of road, and in every five pieces of chunk of road, you wanted to add a, a stop sign, or you want to add a street pole. You can do that. You can do a lot with the construction script to actually procedurally start making entire chunks of road. You can do... I, like it's hard to articulate with my brain because you can kind of do limitless almost limitless amount of things with this you don't have to place your road and then place each pole that you want and then place every stop sign you could potentially with math if you want it to be more standardized in, in even you can add some randomization you can do this fairly easily and that we can kind of control with, with procedural numbers I, I hope I'm using the word procedural right here we can add in and construct inside of our game besides just placing and then doing a cube because if we wanted to do the same setup we'd have to place our cube we'd have to get it aligned to the world and then we'd have to like snap we could like vector snap this or surface snap this it doesn't really work very well and then we'd have to snap it right and then maybe that's in the center now and then we could raise it up and then we'd have to take this and then we'd have to set our snapping to be like 100 and then drag it to the side but then delete it and then drag this again to the and then you can see how that's sloppy and it takes a while and we have all those draw calls with the construction script I, we can do this much cleaner so I hope that makes sense for you guys construction script very useful once again this is only gonna run inside of our editor I believe the construction script also runs the first tick of a level when it opens up but I believe that is just to construct what is existent there I, I believe this is also this also kind of works like event construct just slightly differently um, but yeah, try and keep your gameplay code out of here. You should almost never do gameplay code ever inside of this. I'd really recommend if you're doing um, on construct type code that you handle that over on begin play and try and use the construction script for working inside of the editor. So that's our tutorial on this video and I hope you guys learned something.